I've got my tea in a pumpkin shaped mug today and I'm wearing a woolly jumper and I went out on the rainiest walk. It literally feels like autumn in the UK and I know we're still technically in August. Today is August the 31st, but it feels like autumn to me. <laughs> so you want to glow up mentally and physically. And no, I'm not gonna tell you to go and drink lemon water, make your bed, get up at 5 a.m. to go to the gym. I've watched enough of those videos to know that they all say the same thing and that none of them will work unless you do this. Trust me, I've tried it all. I was that girl at one point before it became a trend. I've also got a lot of experience working within mental health. I worked as a teacher in a mental health school up until October last year and during my seven years of teaching, I had a lot of experience in that field. I also have a severe mental illness myself. I've got bipolar disorder, I've also got PTSD, I'm not going to list off all my diagnoses because there's too many but honestly I have tried all of the things all I can do is let you know what works for me and then hopefully you can apply some of it to your life but some of this will be quite general and it will help you pick out the things that will actually work for you first we need to realize that your happiest and healthiest won't necessarily look like an aesthetic you can feel mentally and physically amazing but look nothing like that girl and there's nothing wrong with pursuing an aesthetic if that's what makes you feel good but if you're doing a lot of these activities to make it look like you've got your life together when you actually are mentally struggling and still feeling not great. You haven't achieved what you set out to achieve. And I'm not saying waking up early or having a green juice won't make you feel good. I'm saying you need to learn what makes you as an individual feel good. The most effective thing for me has been taking note of things that affect me. So I might try green juice and the green juice might make me feel good, but I might have a smoothie that's got maybe more variety of fruits in it like strawberries and also spinach and some green stuff and it might come out a murky brown color but it might make me feel amazing and it's prioritizing how it makes you feel over the aesthetic look and whether it kind of seems like you've got your life together because the green smoothie looks great on Instagram but the murky brown smoothie might actually be what you need and eating a healthy balanced diet full of loads of fruit and veggies and lots of nutrients is well known to help people feel better both mentally and physically but you have to start where you are. If you're starting at a place where you don't eat any vegetables, then you need to start adding in small amounts here and there and build up to maybe having a whole snack plate full of fresh veggies. And then it'll turn into more of a snowball effect. It might be that you're a busy mum with a family and you can't stand there and cut up vegetables for an hour, so you buy some frozen chopped veggies and chuck them into a stir fry. You might be on a low budget and you're unable to purchase the fresh organic vegetables, so again, frozen might be a good choice. Or you might live alone and really enjoy cooking so you can spend a lot of time making an incredible meal that you know is gonna taste amazing. Or you could also be someone that doesn't know how to cook and maybe needs to try something simple or even having like fresh veggies dipped in hummus, something that's easy and accessible to begin with and then build up to trying some new recipes that involve more vegetables. And different people also have different taste buds. I had an aversion to green things for so long because my taste buds made me think that green stuff was very, very bitter, like almost unbearably so. Even like garden peas, I really struggled to eat them because they tasted so bitter. And then at some point in my 20s, my taste buds changed and I started to love more vegetables. Everyone is so different and we can't look at these picture perfect lives or other videos that are like glow up mentally and physically and take what they're doing and do it for us because it's not necessarily going to work. We need to meet ourselves where we're at. I found trying to identify what are coping mechanisms and what are actually healing for me very helpful. So I used the gym as a coping mechanism for many years and while it made me feel physically and mentally better in many cases, it wasn't dealing with the underlying issues that I had. I was just using it as a tool to run away from my problems. And in the same vein, I used to do that with alcohol and partying and the gym had kind of just become a replacement for that and it was holding me back from actually working on my mental health. I was definitely one of those people that said I don't need therapy because I go to the gym and the gym is not a replacement for therapy. It can be a very good coping mechanism and for many people a healthy coping mechanism, but it isn't a replacement. Some examples of things that I do that are actually healing for me and help me work through stuff that I'm dealing with are journaling, going to mental health groups and the mental health groups that I go to are run by a charity and there are loads of them all over the world. I would just go onto Google and search for mental health groups and there's probably a couple in your area. Journaling's been so helpful because it's helped me feel my emotions and write them down and get them out of my brain and it's helped me understand how I'm feeling a little bit better and through therapy, which is obviously another thing that has been very healing, it's helped me recognize that I actually do need to feel my emotions and although that is absolutely terrifying, 
blocking everything out and trying to make out that everything is like positive vibes is not helpful. And that's something that we see with the that girl trend, positive vibes and manifestation and things that can be quite problematic, like forcing positive thoughts when you're actually maybe feeling quite negatively. And you'll be surprised how quickly you can work through negative emotions when you actually allow yourself to feel them. And having negative emotions isn't necessarily a bad thing. They are actually really important for life. And I think the beauty of the human experience is that we can feel the full range of emotions. But feeling negative about something is often a really good sign that something needs to change and that maybe you're not happy with that part in your life or that person that you're hanging around with. And using the things that come out of the journaling and understanding yourself more to adapt to your life so it feels more authentic for you, that could be really helpful. I spoke about having unhealthy coping mechanisms and mine have included alcohol and food and partying and trying to run away from myself. I also think to an extent some of the solo traveling that I did in my 20s was again me running from my problems. And at the moment I also struggle with being a bit of a workaholic and just over planning so all of my time is taken up so I don't have to like sit with and feel my feelings. And then I also have an addiction to my phone quite frequently where I will sit in a scroll hole and just avoid feeling anything or dealing with anything and just keep scrolling through TikTok or Instagram or whatever app I can find. And it's identifying some of the things that you're using to numb yourself and to run from your feelings and maybe stopping doing that and also finding some moments of stillness so you can let those feelings in and allow yourself to feel your feelings, which I know is terrifying. For my phone addiction, I've got a phone prison in my house that I put my phone in and it only comes out during certain hours of the day and that works really well for me. And I've been off it so much more recently and it's been a lot better for my mental health. Society portrays the glow up as an external thing that even has its own set of beauty standards nowadays. It tends to come with like the clean look makeup, they tend to be thin white women, everything is beige or white, then there's the green smoothies, the girl dinner, the nourish bowls, you know what I mean. But it's actually internal. You can make everything look good, look aesthetic, and portray an image that you're really put together and that you know exactly what you're doing and that you're successful, but internally you might not feel great. And portraying an external aesthetic isn't gonna help that. At many points in my life I've tried to fit with an aesthetic of what a mentally and physically healthy person might look like and people definitely believed it. They praised me for like getting my life back because I got thin and I got abs. They were always saying how happy I looked but I was plastering on a smile and posting all of these images on Instagram because I wanted to portray that I was really happy when actually inside I still wasn't great and I was actually struggling with my ED as well and my mental health. I just looked like I was okay and because it fit with the societal narrative of what someone that's like mentally and physically healthy looks looks like. Everybody believed it, obviously. I was really shocked that I'd managed to put on this facade and I still wasn't happy. I thought, well, my life looks like the life of all these other people, but why don't I feel good? They're saying that this is what I need to do. It's not having any impact. Like I'm getting up, I'm making my bed first thing, I'm having a glass of lemon water, I'm drinking my green smoothies. My house is all white and beige. Why don't I feel good? <laughs> Which is silly really, now you think about it. And yes, believe it or not, you can be healthy and happy in a larger body, in a non-aesthetic house, without an influencer kitchen, because it has nothing to do with what it looks like. Now there are a bunch of activities you can do and this will all depend on where you live and what you have access to, but these are just a few of the things that help me. I find going on walks and getting out in the sunlight or whatever the weather's like. Like if it's raining, sometimes that's really good for me because I feel sad and I want to be in the rain and have like this moody atmosphere around me. Sometimes that connects with how I'm feeling and that works really well for me. And nature to me is a reminder that we can't necessarily control our emotions and that we can't control nature and the way that it will go from sunny to raining like it does in the UK. So walking can be a part of this but exercise exercising in a way that you enjoy that doesn't feel like a punishment. So you're not waking up at 5am to force yourself to go to the gym to do this 12 step routine that you've seen someone online do. Maybe you go and do a class that you've always wanted to try or you do a little gym routine that you've come up with yourself that just feels good for you. And maybe you go to the gym as a bit of an outlet, something that helps you work through your emotions and just gets out that frustration and stress when you've come back from your stressful job or the whole day with the family or whatever is 
on your plate at the moment. It can be a physical tool to help you reduce those stress levels and allowing yourself a day off comes with that i think there's a lot of toxic hustle culture out there especially with like businesses there's this pressure of trying to be the girl boss and have a side hustle and also go to the gym like seven days a week which by the way is not a good idea you need at least i would say two rest days a week like one is a bare minimum but i think most people need two rest days even elite athletes take two rest days but also make sure you're taking a rest day from your work if you can and that's something i've had to learn to do i'm terrible at resting and i've had to learn how to do something calm and non-productive because if i'm girl bossing my way through life then i'm actually not living it and i'm also constantly exhausted because i'm just trying to chase the success all the time but again that's one of the things that comes up in my journaling is i feel like i'm never enough and i have to keep working and working and working to get rid of that feeling that might not be the case for you but rest is important and that also means like resting and being away from technology putting the phone in the phone prison maybe like getting your head stuck in a book for me that was one of my happiest times when i was in uni and i just had my head in loads of books and i was was working on little projects that just made me really fulfilled and I try and get back to that I read a lot of fantasy at the moment and I'm really into Sarah J Mass. I'm sure you've heard of her her books are a massive TikTok trend and I'm obsessed <laughs> I'm now in the Throne of Glass series and that is a really good way for me to have some slow time that isn't productive that takes me away from that hustle culture and the grind that they tell us that we need to do and just focus on something that I enjoy. And finding that I enjoy reading again has been so good for my mental health. And part of that, like reading might not be your thing, but finding hobbies that are things that you really want to do and feel authentic to you and make you feel happy, that's really important. So I've got other hobbies, like I really like to paint sometimes or draw, my degree is in art, so I like to do a wide range of things. And a couple of years ago, because I was just trying to work and work and work, and also trying to go to the gym as much as possible, I had no room for hobbies or actual life. And I think that's one of the reasons why none of it was actually working and it wasn't making me feel mentally or physically any better, because I was constantly stressed never resting and constantly focused on trying to be enough by doing all these things like going to the gym so find a hobby do something that you actually enjoy stop listening to influencers online tell you what you need to be doing and figure out what you like to do now you can take or leave this one because I know this is very popular and for some reason it's super controversial <laughs> I stopped drinking three years ago I'm now three years sober and drinking alcohol was a massive trigger for my bipolar disorder. I know I'm unique in that I have bipolar disorder and that is a severe mental illness. And when that gets triggered, that is potentially catastrophic. For me, I just couldn't do it. If I drink one glass of wine, I'll be depressed for at least a week. It's not worth it to me. But alcohol is shown to increase anxiety and have loads of impacts on mental health. So it might be worth considering your relationship with alcohol and whether that needs changing in some way. Another really big trigger for me is stress. So stress management is really important keeping organized and on top of things in whichever way works for you for me that seems to be keeping like three different notebooks <laughs> and an ipad and just having multiple lists of all the things that i need to do i don't know why it's basically organized chaos at this point but for me that having it all written down and being able to like brain dump it onto a piece of paper and then organize it into the like priorities that helps me stress manage back when i was a teacher i would openly communicate what i could take on and what i couldn't take on so if someone came to me with another task that they required me to do and they were my manager but i knew full well i was constantly overworked and couldn't take on any more i would say i don't have the capacity to do that as well as the other thing that i'm doing right Right now how would you like me to prioritize these tasks and usually the thing that they just burst into my door and told me to do was actually not that important so that went to the bottom of the list and they were like oh no like I want you to continue to do this part of your job because that is really important that you meet that deadline and this other thing that I've just told you can wait 
and nine times out of ten that's how it worked and then when the new things become a priority then they'll bring them up with you again or you can just get to them at a later date or they'll just start to learn that you have boundaries and you're not a people pleaser that says yes to literally everything and then massively overload yourself and they might find somebody else to do it and if I learn anything doing that it's that people actually respect open and honest communication and it doesn't make you look bad it actually makes you look good in a job when you say this is the amount of capacity I have and you're you look like you're on top of your workload and you're directly communicating that no matter how good you are at your job there isn't the physical time to fit this work in that you're getting me to do and I know that's easier said than done and I'm sure in some jobs you wouldn't be able to do that and it's just part of the job culture that you are working ridiculous hours but this is where some of the other things might come in and help so you might have more complete rest days where you completely unplug from technology or plan things in that are gonna really help with your self-care and making yourself feel better. Just try and mitigate that impact that the stress might have on you. And then learn what actually makes you happy. What are your real life goals that exist outside of impressing other people? Get rid of the life checklist that people say that you have to have, like getting the perfect job, getting engaged, getting married, having kids getting the perfect house, ditch all of that. What is gonna make you happy? What will your life feel like when you've reached those goals and when you mentally and physically feel the best? And not what will it look like? What would it feel like? Who have you got around you? What sort of things do you spend your days doing? What does your work-life balance look like? And then try and work towards that. There is so much pressure to tick off this imaginary checklist and I just wish I could take that away from everybody because if anything that is what leads to poor mental health and poor physical health is striving for this constant success instead of actually looking after yourself and figuring out what you want. I'm not perfect and a lot of the time I have to pull myself back together and get my life together again. This happens frequently and that's okay. I'm only human and I'm gonna have a wobble and I'll forget some of these things that I just told you. I forget them all of the time and I have to remind myself. If you'd like to watch me do that in real time then watch this video next. It's called Getting My Life Together and I'm probably gonna do more of them. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!